There's no honor in killing crazy. Welcome to the show, everyone. Yes, we have uh, uh, a few movies coming up for you. We've got the Mel Gibson Santa Claus movie, Fat Man, a Jiu Jitsu with Nicolas Cage, and the one that everyone will be tuning in for, Dinesh D'Souza's uh, Trump card. That'll be the third movie. <laughs> Always keep them waiting. <laughs> Even though... <laughs> Full disclosure, we actually shot that review first. <laughs> oh, okay. We actually I was gonna try to like keep continuity, but okay. Were you, since were you the, gonna be like, I wonder if I'll like it? <laughs> well not, um, not quite, but I'll I was gonna keep it kind of uh <laughs> here's here's the extra reason for that though. So when I told Laura the other day, we watched these from home. When I told Laura the other day that we'd be watching the movies here. I go like, oh yeah, I added uh, a Trump card. I guess that'll be the third movie that we review. And she, she's like, uh, she goes, the third movie, so I'll be off work before you watch the third movie. I'm like, oh yeah. She goes, K yeah, could you watch that first while I'm... She's like, I don't want to have to come home from work and, and you've watched the Mel Gibson movie, right. the Nick Cage movie, but right. now you're stuck with, <laughs> with watching Trump card. Dude, dude, that was seriously like the best plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> Especially after recently. She was, I was watching a few movies uh, for, for work. And uh, one of them was Possessor. So far, easily one of the best movies I've seen this year. She comes home. She's like, would you watch? I'm like, oh, Possessor. She's like, was it good? I'm like, oh, my gosh, it was freaking great. She's like, man, I wish I could have watched it with you. I go, well, I got one other movie left to watch. She's like, okay, what? I'm like, uh, Operation Christmas Drop. <laughs> Not as good. Spoiler. I was going to say, that doesn't even... The, Netflix the, Christmas title, <laughs> the title doesn't even sound like We're good. watching that movie and all the way through it, she's like, I'm so upset at you for watching the better movies when I was at work. I'm like, honey, I didn't know. How was I supposed to know Possessor was going to be better than Operation Christmas Drop? But she did catch the tail end of uh, Jiu Jitsu to be the first movie that we review. So... I want you to get a good look at the uh, the poster for uh, Jiu Jitsu. Nicholas Cage on there and uh, Tony Ja and everything. <laughs> and whatever movie you're picturing in your head from that box cover, just hold on to that. Hold on to that thought because whatever you're picturing in your head based on that cover, gonna be better than the movie that you're act that you're actually watching. Now, keep in mind where it says in the credits and on the poster, uh, and Nicolas Cage. Right. <laughs> and Tony Jaw, even though they're kind of front and center on the, uh, the cover, uh, they are not the main characters. <laughs> Frank Grillo's in this, uh, Nicolas Cage. But the way is, Nicolas Cage probably doesn't come into this movie till about halfway into the film. Right, yeah. So, before then, it's almost like you're watching, uh, one of those Steven Seagal movies where he's on the cover, but then is just kind of sprinkled throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah. The, and it's some, um, and you know, it says starring Steven Seagal in this movie, but you pop it in and it's like, oh, it's starring, I don't know, Bill, whoever this guy is. <laughs> and so, but a difference being that uh, whenever you have inserted Steven Seagal into these movies, you have to pay him extra to stand on his feet, and he barely does anything <laughs> beyond that. Not with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is more like watching um, when a Godfrey Ho actor is inserted into one of those, like your Pierre Kirby's or something like that, where they're still yeah. showing up and doing their job yeah. and doing their thing and being and being entertaining. In Cage's in in terms of Cage in this movie, hands down the best part of the movie. Right. Uh. As far as the rest of it goes, it is based on a comic book, which you can tell because it has comic book inserts throughout the movie. Is it based on a comic it book? It is. I, I double-checked that when we were upstairs. I go, okay. is this based on a comic? Like, okay, it is a comic, apparently. So, yeah, there's comic book-style inserts throughout it. But, so, all right, it's... here. Here's basically the gist of it. You have this random like soldier type guy who loses his memory, like he's Jason Bourne. He's piecing together back together his memories. Like, what is this invisible thing that was throwing ninja stars at me? Why did I fall off of this cliff? Uh, then it it be. <laughs> This is a, this is quite a few different movies. Right. Uh, suddenly, then the predator shows up. It's right. like it's it's like 
but it's less Predator and more like you're watching uh, like the Bruno Mattei knockoff of Predator, like Robo War. <laughs> so picture more like a modern update of Robo War, ooh. less Predator. Ooh, 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 should we switch to Bruno Mattei mode? <laughs> I believe you shot that episode <laughs> when we did uh, that episode of the Bruno Mattei show. Bruno Mattei uh, mode. It's like, yeah, like it's black and white and we're at a bar and everything and it's 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, so you haven't seen Robo War, but you filmed us talking about yeah. it. Uh, so you got this. Um, so, but also, like, a comet is about to hit Earth, I believe, and the only thing that it will, will stop the Earth's destruction is if our main character, some guy, uh... <laughs> ends up fighting the Robo War Predator, uh, a.k.a. this movie's Kurgan. <laughs> so it's a little Highlander, it's a little uh, Predator, a little born identity thrown in there. So basically, they're doing a lot of walking through the movie and fighting. A lot of fighting. This is pretty much fight porn. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. Like, it's not... There is a lot of action in this movie. There yeah. is. It's not one of those cases where had this been like an Asylum movie or something like that, you probably would have gotten just a lot of walking <laughs> and very little fighting. Maybe a little bit of it at at the end. I um, made a lot of Mortal Kombat jokes during that because it did. It, it felt like a cheap knockoff of um, Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat. No, actually, I take it back that this, if this was Asylum, that it would. No, it would, because if this was, because this is almost like a Paul Logan movie, like Ballistica or something from from ten, ten some uh, years ago. So, so maybe it would have. But, but they do. It's called Jujitsu. There is a lot of fighting in the movie. <laughs> it is mostly fighting. Every fight scene in this movie is pretty much like a climactic fight that you'd see at the end of any random martial arts movie that you're watching. Yeah. The problem is, is that there is so much that I don't care. Like, I, I don't. When the first half hour of it is all of these non-stop fight scenes with really not much context yet because right. you haven't seen the flashbacks yeah. and even when you do and you cut back I was like oh wait that was a flashback okay <clears throat> alright fine uh, honestly this whole movie just had a lot of issues with continuity and dialogue and well Nicolas Cage's dialogue is pretty good yeah <laughs> only because well not that it was good he was just selling it yes yes it was, <laughs> it was, it was Nicolas Cage so yeah yeah he was just Really selling it. And you could tell who they were saving the better lines for. I'll mention that. Uh, I'll get more into that here in a minute. But so much of it is so many fight scenes when you really don't give a shit one way or the other about 90% of the characters in the movie. Let alone even knowing why they're fighting at first. Yeah. It is just so much fighting that I'm exhausted by it 30 minutes in. And I just flat out don't care. Because this movie also has a lot of terrible special effects in it. <laughs> Which is sad, because some of the... CGI ninja stars, CGI... <laughs> it's because, like, in terms of some of the camera work they were doing, wasn't that bad. They were at least trying to be ambitious with it, with yeah. a lot of the the longer takes and uh, some of the uh, uh, steady cam stuff that they were doing. But it would be ruined by this god awful CG blood that they're throwing in left and right. CG gunfire bullet holes like bouncing off of the wall, like looking like lasers and shit. Yeah. And uh, spark effects and things like that. Yeah. It, it looked like the same type of green screen stuff I pop up on YouTube when I need a fake blood splurt effect or Lloyd's what if it exploded segments on the show. <laughs> like it, it looks like that and it ruins whatever shot is going on. Uh, like that one part where uh, even some of the other blood, like when the guy has his hand out and he is bleeding and has fake blood on his hand, but that's ruined when for no reason, they put in this horribly cheap pff, 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 
randomly out of the side of his arm. Yeah. A guy will be dead on the ground, and yeah. I guess it's too hard to just put a pool of blood down there. So it's just this bad CGI pool of blood on the mm -hmm. floor that he's laying in. It looked awful. It ruined whatever it choreography. Yeah, whatever choreography was going on in it, and um. Remember in, in the early uh, in the early scene when they were doing the hardcore Harry? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Or hardcore Henry, Henry like yeah. uh, uh, sequence. I felt that was a little slower than they wanted it to wanted it to be. Oh okay. Like like I think like it 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 should have been more faster paced. Like you you had this guy literally taking out a full army and. Um, and it was. It, it felt a lot like Hardcore Henry or the Kingsman uh, with, oh, with the camera following him around. Yeah. But it just wasn't. It, it it was like, come on, go faster, you know? <laughs> My big problem with that sequence was more so it was so early in the movie. I didn't know the context of anything. I didn't right. know who a lot of yeah. these characters were. So I just didn't, I didn't care. That too. This, this is such a spectacle of a fight scene, but yeah. you've given me no reason to invest in it. Right. Uh, so that was my issue with, with that. Now, a lot of what you're saying with some of the editing, some of that I didn't have so much of a problem with. Like, in the Nick Cage fight sequences in it, of course, when this character is doing backflips and things like that, you know it's not Nicolas Cage doing this. Well, yeah. But they did the best they could editing that together. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know when it's a stunt person, you know when, like, well, clearly that's not Nicolas well, Cage. But. I, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. I just, you know, whenever you choreograph a scene like... Like in that, uh, like in the uh, church fight scene of the Kingsman. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Whenever you choreograph that, you almost gotta like stay at a at a at a good tempo, and you know really move just yeah. like just like in a fast pace. This was not that. This was that. This was that um, approach, but at a much slower it tempo. Was. And I, I knew what and... you meant. I'm just meaning in terms of like other editing in the movie that, oh, I, thought, okay. that I thought was okay. was fine. And and that I could chalk some of that up to the budget because I mean it doesn't have the budget of something like Kingsman or I guess. Or, or, or a movie like that. And I was more so. Um, I mean, you're better at noticing that kind of thing than I am. Like, cause that was more so what I was noticing in that was really just kind of my lack of investment on it. And also the bad CGI yeah. that was in there. But where I thought some of the editing was fine was when they had to kind of edit it together to make it look like Nicolas Cage is doing some of these, some of this fighting Yeah, when there's a stunt man or, <laughs> yeah. or something like that. I've seen that. Speaking of Steven Seagal movies, I've seen that go way south <laughs> where it looks horrible. This I thought looked fine. I thought it looked like the best that they probably could have edited. Yeah. It. Like really, like nothing really took me out of it in those mm. sequences. So did you like Nicolas Cage in this? Um, I thought he was cool. Uh, I just, I think that role was kind of forgettable. Like, uh, I I don't think it... I, th I think it was the only... Mem one of the only memorable roles in the movie. Cause the, yeah. Because the other... I just mean in terms of Nicolas Cage's... Um, oh, in terms of his, broad, his bigger filmography? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> this is... Yeah, this isn't because uh, because Nick Cage like this isn't I, I, man. <laughs> no, it, no, it's not as like memorable as is. It's not as memorably bad as that, but it's yeah. You're you're right. This is one of the more forgettable entries in his filmography. But in terms of his performance and his character in the movie, yeah. there's a lot of people in this movie who could have been played by anyone. Mm -hmm. Frank Grillo is in this, and I love Frank Grillo. Anyone could have played his part in this movie. Same with Tony Jott. Anyone could have played that part in this. He, it, he's barely even a character to begin with. Same with Frank Grillo, and their lines are kind of interchangeable. They are just there to be names on a poster. Right. Whereas Nick Cage, 
no, it yeah. makes sense. That's Nick Cage playing this yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. Nick Cage is coming in here, having a good time, saying s- some pretty funny one-liners in his very unique delivery yeah. there'll be i mean he comes he comes into this like i said maybe halfway into it and instantly brings in a burst of energy to it yeah it really instantly does. he does it really does there'll be a fight scene and it'll be like don't touch my piano and things like that. <laughs> little lines get like off that. my piano yeah yeah <laughs> like he'll add just he'll just take a line like that and make something out of it because he's really 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 good at doing that and any time he's on screen through the rest of it, it's entertaining. And he is making something out of this role. Yeah. The other guy, you can tell there were two people in this movie who they wanted to stand out and everyone else was just... Right. One was Nicolas Cage. <clears throat> the other was Tex. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I was about to ask you what you thought of Tex. Okay, so let's talk about Tex. So Tex, like, again... He, he, he can get a laugh out of scenes with bad special effects in them where they'll yeah. be again it'll be kind of this ambitious steady cam shot yeah. but with this horrible cg that looks like he's being attacked <laughs> by a screensaver his character <laughs> he really really his character is the comic relief in the film <laughs> And really, which by the way, Tex uh, as as the comic relief is is honestly, I, I hate to be one of these guys, but he is kind of problematic because his mm. uh, his his um his role is honestly very very stereotypical. Always running and uh, <laughs> hashtag cancel jujitsu. <laughs> Shut down these dojos. No, here's the thing. He is a very sitcom-y character. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. a very, like, out of a 90s sitcom. Exactly. Or an old horror movie. Yeah. Where all this shit will be flying at him, and he's like that in Living Color sketch exactly. with Damon Wayans. Is, is, <laughs> oh, uh, shit, bro! <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, with uh, Damon Wayans playing Richard Pryor, where it's like, Richard Pryor is scared for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> It is so much oh, of that, shit. and he's just running I away like that sketch. like the fight scene will happen at the end, and he just pops up from from behind a table, just going like, "We good? <laughs> is it over yet?" And then like he'll come, he'll have a random bottle of booze in his hand, right. and just be like, "Who wants a drink? Who wants a drink?" <laughs> Here's my thing, though. At least that's a character. True. Like it is. At least yeah. he is distinguishable from the rest of true, them. True, true. Everybody him, else, yeah. Everybody else is just interchangeable. Yeah. Him and Nicolas Cage are the only two <laughs> where the writers gave a crap about. Yeah. They are yeah. actually giving Tex Guy lines of personality. Yeah. Things to say, <laughs> things to react off of, and Nicolas Cage are giving lines to, and he's having fun being Nicolas Cage. So it's like I can't harp too much on the sitcominess of this other character because I'm like at least he is memorable and don't get me wrong I'm not one of these triggered types no I it, know. It, it's just it, it's it's just I I acknowledge okay this this, this is a, <laughs> this is a very stereotypical uh, character but hey you know let's go with it <laughs> because like I said he's one of the only ones in it that is a character right yeah <laughs> yeah and it's, uh, and it's weird it's almost like it's almost like that's all they know either either bland nothing characters or over the top you know <laughs> as the writer the of the characters. as the writer of the character of black angus <laughs> i understand where their heads at <laughs> I once wrote a movie which contained the line of dialogue. Uh, what was it? Like, uh, I haven't cried this much since LeVar Burton played Roots. That's not his name. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> uh, so what, what grade would you give this one? I'd probably go with a D. You give this one a D? Yeah. Yeah, I will. Uh, because of Nicolas Cage... Um, cause he did really have just like a, he, he really did. I don't want to say elevate cause he didn't make it good. He right. just made a bad movie <laughs> watchable in his scenes. <laughs> so like because of Nick Cage coming in and bringing up the entertainment value and 
it's uh, it's not that some of the scenes are badly shot. It's just they have bad effects in them. Uh, I'll give it a D plus. D plus. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm there with you. Honestly, if you want to see something like this, just watch Robo War, the Bruno Mattei movie. Watch that. You'll yeah. get more out of that than this. There's or any better other lines Nick Cage in it. Movie. There's better characters in it. Yeah. There's better characters in Robo War. The effects are better. The, the explosions are there. The blood's there mm. and all that. Just watch a Bruno Mattei movie. Watch Ballistica with Paul Logan. It's more entertaining than this. All right. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back with... Uh, Fat Man with the, the Mel Gibson Santa Claus movie. Yes, we'll be right back. Uh, we'll be right back with a review for that. See ya. They put up with us so they can sell their toys and sodas and cars. We're a business. Altruism is not a deductible on their bottom line. Don't put it all on them. You've changed too. You might be right. You still have it. All I have is a loathing for a world that's forgotten after i watched uh christmas chronicles 2 yesterday and then fat man today it is the year of the badass santa claus <laughs> really i haven't uh christmas chronicles is that what it's called christmas the, where kurt russell plays uh uh santa claus i haven't seen it oh they're fun because it's yeah. kurt russell playing santa okay. claus so it's so they're entertaining for for that and goldie hawn is uh is mrs claus but this one uh it, well that one yeah, it's uh, certainly a badass Santa Claus, but still in a PG-rated kids movie. Aww. This one, yeah, yeah. R-rated, <laughs> hard drinking, hard living, Mel oh, Gibson, man. burnt out Santa Claus. Uh, so Fat Man is essentially if you took a a, a rougher, darker Santa Claus story and made a, a modern western out of it. Set in modern time, but yeah. definitely with uh, the tone, characters, even soundtrack choices and pacing, like you're watching High Noon meets like a, a spaghetti western with Santa Claus. <laughs> so Santa Claus in this movie, who's Mel Gibson, is uh, he's down on his luck. He needs some money and everything. And he's, de he's depressed, too. He's doing shots with Alka-Seltzer in them uh, <laughs> because, you know, he's, he's having trouble paying the bills. And too many kids are <laughs> naughty this year. So he's not getting as much as much money for, for all this from uh, the economy and everything due to he's just having to give out more coal. Than he is toys. Yeah. So in order to get back some of the money he needs, he ends up taking up a government contract to begin building uh, uh, control boards, control boards, for, uh, for military technology yeah. uh, stuff for like fighter jets. Yeah. And, and, and things like that. Uh, so that's what he has the elves start doing uh, <laughs> in, uh, in, Santa, in Santa's workshop yes. in this film. And then meanwhile, <laughs> you have this like 10 year old sociopath yes, who's dude. basically like a way, 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 way better written version of like the bratty rich kid from like uh, uh, To Catch a Yeti <laughs> is pissed off that. Uh, count your blessings. You didn't see that movie. <laughs> Speaking of lumps of coal. Uh, so this kid ends up getting coal in his stocking because he, one, he's a little sociopath right. anyway. He really is. When he gets second place in the science fair oh. project, he, uh, the dude ends up kidnapping the girl who's the winner and threatens her by shocking her to death with a car battery, <laughs> threatens her to saying that she cheated. That way he'll get the first place ribbon. <laughs> This kid is great. <laughs> That's what I'm about. Hey, I'm about to keep going. I'm this I'm, kid. I, we need to find out who this kid is. What is his name? He's fantastic in this movie. He's great in every scene he's in. He's a real villain in oh, this. Oh man! Like he he walks in and commands these scenes, and he's just like this ten year old kid in this movie, <laughs> playing this little creep who is intimidating when he's with that girl and he's threatening her with the battery yes. it's like looking at this miniature like patrick bateman uh, yes. threatening this Agreed. this other this other kid this is a this is a this is an actor who he's worth watching out for 
look for this kid in some other stuff. I, I have a feeling this kid will be going places. He's yeah. really good in this. Right, um, go still there. looking up the actor's uh, name. Looking uh, Chance Hurstfield. Yeah. So he he's fantastic, and he ends up getting coal in his stocking for obvious reasons, <laughs> and then swears this vendetta against Santa Claus, he, and he's frequently already in touch with a hitman. What's up? He was in Little Things and Good Boys as uh, uh, as well. Oh. I, yeah, okay, I remember him from that. Okay. So he ends up getting Walton Goggins, who's a hitman that he's already, like, in touch with. Like, Walton Goggins has done jobs for him in the past and everything. So now he says, I want Santa's head. I want you to kill Santa Claus. Uh, Walton Goggins already has a past with Santa Claus. Like, you don't know why until way later on, but uh, uh, you, you don't know why until later on. But he's very keen to take up this job to get revenge on Santa Claus. You get the sense that maybe he's also gotten coal in the past yeah. or maybe something else. Because even before this Santa job comes in, he's collecting toys from Santa Claus. Like he's yeah. buying them off. He's buying them off people. So you get the sense of like, okay, he didn't get much when he was. He's got he, like a vendetta. A yeah. He's got a real vendetta. I really enjoyed this movie. I really did too. I, I this really was did. so cool. <laughs> this was so good. Like, like I, I, I just love the idea of, you know, not the, not the clean and and prim and, uh, uh, you know, Santa Claus. I like this. It's, it's, it's real. It's, it's very gritty. It's very like, you know. Uh, you know, when, when Santa's on his off season, he's going to the bar, he's, you yeah. know, working on his farm and everything in Alaska. Yeah. And in this, in this, by the, this movie, Santa Claus lives in Alaska. <laughs> right. In like rural North, Alaska. North Peak is what it's called. <laughs> yeah. And I, I like that it's, it definitely has a sense of humor. It definitely has a, a dark and twisted sense yeah, of humor from, yeah. from the plot alone, but it's played straight. Like yeah. it's it's like it kind of reminds me of has a, elves of a cold pursuit in that regard with uh, the the Liam Neeson movie from yeah. a year or so ago. Uh, so these characters are 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 playing it legit. They're playing mm -hmm. it really relatively straight from mm -hmm. the hitman to the kid to Mel Gibson. He's playing it like he's been doing this a long time and he's burnt out on the job. Even the elves, even the elves, the elves as well. There aren't, they aren't like overly like, <laughs> you know, but they like, do look like, elves. right. Yeah. Yeah. They look like elves. They, um, you know, whenever you, uh, whenever you're introduced to the foreman character seven, yeah. ooh, which by the way, um, yeah, you, uh, when it's, and it's showing them eating like candy and sugar as yeah. part of their diet, but they, in the context of the movie, they realistically explain why right, again, yeah. in the context of the movie, yeah. it explains why, like they're looking like elves, but they are working in what looks like a real factory yeah and when mel gibson comes home from delivering all the presents he's got a bullet wound in his side <laughs> which explains like yeah some kids were shooting up at the sleigh again there's bullet holes in the side of it and you know he's he's keeping he's still keeping in shape with his punching bag and like working on his sleigh and fixing it as if he's a farmer working on yeah. a piece of 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 uh farm equipment. Eric Wolf, by the way, played seven. Oh, okay. Um Um Excellent. <laughs> Thanks. You're like, you're like, I had no idea who that is. <laughs> um, uh, but uh yeah, I guess uh, I it's guess, cool. I guess he really. <laughs> Let me read off the filmography no, no, of no, all the I, actors. In no, no, no. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna see if he was in anything uh, recent or no, noteworthy. But yeah. no, no, he really wasn't. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, but but no, to your point. Uh, no, I was uh, just that. Um, again, like okay, when Mel Gibson has to give the uh, speech to uh, all of the elves that they've taken up this military yeah, yeah, contract yeah. and that's why they're there early. Like, it's such an ab absurd scenario and story they're doing, but uh, it's played like you're watching 
him give like this really serious speech yeah. to a bunch of his workers and, that he cares about. And he looks like he's like on the verge of tears as he's, he does as, show some tears. Yeah. yeah. As, as he's, as he's uh, delivering. The he's speech. really good in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone is Walton Goggins is the kid. The kid is, is great. Ruth. Um, oh yeah. His wife. I mean, there's things I could criticize about it. Like, uh, um, it does reach a point about two thirds of the movie where I was sitting there going like, I know this is all leading somewhere. I just hope that it's the, that the payoff that it's going towards is going to be worth it because a lot of it is a big build up to what will be this eventual showdown between Mel Gibson and Walton Goggins. And, uh, some of that was feeling very like kind of first or second drafty, a really good first or second draft, but something that could maybe be punched up with another draft. There are a lot of things at the beginning of the movie where it is kind of a random sequence of scenes. And yet, yeah, it is all leading somewhere. It does. But, you know, we're with this this set of characters here. Now we're with this set of characters. Now we're with this set of characters. Um, that is certainly all leading somewhere. But it is it is edited a little random. And when the lead up is so long with all the traveling that Walton Goggins is doing, with everything that was going on at the farmhouse and everything... Mm -hmm. It reached a point where it started to feel a little padded to get to to get it to ninety minutes. It's about a ninety five minute movie, and when it was getting about seventy minutes in the movie is when I I was thinking like, okay, they are spending a lot of time on this build up here, and I get it in very much a high noon kind of way or, or an old western. But I that was making me think like the payoff had had better be really good. Okay, and it is. Okay, the payoff is great. I was I was, <laughs> I was hoping that you wouldn't uh, wouldn't like talk about the uh, build up and everything and just be like, but the payoff was. Meh. No, I really liked it. I did. One, it had really good blood effects in it. Yes, other than jujitsu. Like <laughs> yeah. so. There was yeah. there was that. It gets bloody and it looks like it's getting bloody. So um, let's talk about like when uh so let's talk about when he goes on that run. Uh so in the movie Christmas it, um Christmas is like a couple days away when the movie first starts. So yeah. Santa Claus goes on his annual run and when he gets back Christmas morning, he's wounded. He's, he's Oh, I like, talked about that. Oh, you haven't listened to a word I've said, I, have you? <laughs> I was digging up info. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out the best boy of this movie also did catering on... Uh, this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've already resigned to the fact that I'll get cold this Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> See, we don't care. Um, no, no. Uh, but but what? But one more thing too about some of the pacing and what I was sort of thinking about seventy minutes in. As good as that kid is in the movie, he does kind of disappear about halfway into the movie. Right. Uh, right. I feel like uh, there was there was so much focus on. Um, on, on the hitman, uh, with, yeah, Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins, but but really, I wanted to see more of that kid. Yeah, and I was thinking like, wow, we haven't gone back to him in a while. Yeah. Is he just not going to be in this? I mean, I, I figured he was going to come back, sure. but I was like, they've kind of he's sort of disappeared out of this for a while. Yeah. Now, granted, like I said, with the build up and anything, when he does come back into it, the payoff is really good. Yes, and and like a lot of things. When when there is this final confrontation between the hitman and between Santa Claus, weirdest sentence I've ever said. <laughs> um, when there is when there is that confrontation, it's like a western. It's it like really it's is, like you're yeah. watching a spaghetti western, mm -hmm. like a duel or something, and it is treated as such. It's not going rid wildly, ridiculously grotesque, over the top, yeah. or anything like that. It's like you're watching like a, a shootout, yeah. and, and again, like I said, like a, a one of the Man with No Name trilogy. Sure. Like, or, like even the some of the music that comes in is is similar, um, and the dialogue between the two of them is good too. Like when you find out the backstory of the guy, like again, it's 
read straight. Like, like this is a real character with a real backstory yeah. in this crazy plot line of a, of a movie. Now, when the kid comes back into it, it's terrifying. <laughs> I won't spoil what oh, happens. Oh, you got to see this movie. Yeah. And by the way, can we talk about the shootout at the end? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of shooting in the movie, so maybe I missed something. No, um, no like, it's... Man, the scene that Mel Gibson has at the end of this movie is like one of my favorite crazy Mel scenes in yes. any movie that I've, that I've seen. Like lethal weapon uh, grade craziness. It's just it's oh. frightening. Yes. It, oh my God, boy. Like it's a good payoff. It is. I had a good time watching this movie. I did too. I did. I did too. Your turn. What? What's your? What's your grade? Oh, what's my grade? Yeah. So when it was, uh, so before the shootout, because I, I don't want to. Okay. Uh, 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 sorry to cut you off. I just, I just want to know yours first because I don't want to get over, um, over enthusiastic. Over oh, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> about my letter grade. So I was thinking, like. Before it got to like its conclusion, in my head, I was leaning more towards a B plus because I was having some like there were some issues I had with pacing, and uh, again, certain characters kind of dropping out of the movie at that point. But when it got to what it was all leading to, the the payoff that it had, how they dealt with it, and uh, this confrontation at, at the end of the movie that to me was such a really good collection of scenes that it, it bumped it up to like an a minus for me i really had fun with this I, I i like this movie better than a lot of other critics do it's it's not getting that well reviewed oh that's that's and a shame with some of the issues that i did have with it i guess i could see why but at the same time i was like I really had a good time with this. I, I like what they were doing with the Western angle. I, I liked what the stories they were given with these characters, the performances, the payoff, definitely. So I, I, I really enjoyed this movie. <laughs> okay. I, uh, okay, good. Uh, I was originally thinking a, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, and it, because I didn't really have a, a big problem with the pacing, mm -hmm. um, you bring it up, uh, and it's and it's like, yeah, I, I suppose maybe they could have uh, uh, gave they could have gave the kid more screen time than mm -hmm. uh, than they did. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, yeah, I'll give it an A. I you did. Know, you know? Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were yeah, going to no, change it. No, I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm saying that like, a yeah, no, yeah. oh yeah, no, no, mm -hmm. this movie was good. <laughs> this movie was really good. Laura was good. <laughs> Laura, like we mentioned in the jujitsu review, where uh, Laura was like, uh, "Wait for me to get home with that one. Watch Trump card first. I don't want to come home to that movie." And so she was, she was with us when we were watching. She liked, she really liked it a lot. And uh, halfway through, she said something like, "I swear to God, if you guys had watched this movie while I was gone and I came home, and you're like, let's watch Trump card." <laughs> She's like, I would have killed you. <laughs> you should still show her Trump card. Just, oh, yeah. just she'll like. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, speaking of that review is next. Uh, we got Trump card coming up next. So uh, stay tuned. I think that's the one that I think that's the one most people are tuning in for. <laughs> so get ready. Get ready for that. It happens every couple years. It's like a every couple year holiday. We review the Dinesh D'Souza movie. See you then. They want to make us into worms. How many fingers am I holding up, Winston? Four. <laughs> Who will stop them? Forgot to tell you, it gets very hot in here. <laughs> I can see, yeah. I can... I that's why this time I made sure not to be wearing my jacket. But anyway, we finally got to the uh, the reason why you're here, I'm sure, which is the review for this this film. Your first time seeing 
a, a, seeing a Dinesh-ter piece. And unfortunately, you couldn't go to the theater to see it. Oh, like yeah. Dave and I saw his uh, his his other two movies yeah. in, in the theater. You miss the theatrical. It's such a shame. Three D experience. Three uh, D. No, but. I oh. wish. <laughs> um, well, Dinesh D'Souza, D'Souza Demedia, so kind of 3D, a little, a little bit. You missed out on his last film, Dinesh of a Nation. Then there was the other film, Dinesh's America. <laughs> it's 2016 classic. Whatever, dude. Oh, these movies are my favorite time oh. of year. Or every two years, rather. It's okay. Even though this was your first Dinesh D'Souza movie, uh, Trump Card... Which I'm sorry it took me so long to review this. I honestly forgot it was out. It's actually been out for a while. But uh, it, it's all right. Because if you've seen one of his movies. You've seen them all. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right down to the, the same footage being yeah. used in, in the movies. <laughs> he's got footage in this movie from uh, Hillary's America. And he's got, uh, he reuses the, the Lincoln footage and the train Lincoln footage yeah. from from death of a Na from death of a nation i don't maybe most of this movie is just cgi it is just hologram dinesh d'souza <laughs> placed in the interviews of him sitting there in every interview just <laughs> nodding mm, mm, doing this with his hands like he's a 12 year, like he's a 12 year old pretending to be smart yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. yes yes but there is there is plenty of new stuff in this film for instance the movie being bookended like a saw film <laughs> in which it's which it's Dinesh D'Souza going what if Dinesh D'Souza directed an adaptation of 1984 what would it be like if it's the 2 plus 2 sequence I'll tell you what it is. It looks like a saw knockoff from 2005. Yeah. <laughs> You'd find direct a video yeah. where a guy is bound and gagged to a, oh, a guy is bound and gagged to the table. How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers am I holding up? Four! <laughs> ah, foam coming out of his mouth like we've gotten a remake of Faces of Death as directed by Dinesh D'Souza until it shows like horrible special effect. <laughs> fifth finger sitting out. Five, eight, five. <laughs> I don't know. You're watching it going, oh my God, I don't want to be tortured. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Can uh, I go back in time and vote for Trump? Uh, I, I don't want to be strapped to a table and given shock treatment. That, that oh my god. Uh, okay. Um, I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad one of us was. Oh, I was. Are you kidding me? I had a great time watching oh, this. Oh, God. <laughs> I was. This movie made me so irritated just at. All of of the propaganda that this guy uh, spewed. You get used to it over time. Uh, you do. You get you get very used to Dinesh D'Souza's smug ass face uh, over, the, over these movies. Down to the opening credit sequence, which goes into uh, what if you, you know the the mini series from the eighties, uh, America with a K, where it's uh, what if the what if the communists won the Cold War and now America is spelled with a K and we're under like communist rule. The opening credits are like that, only <laughs> with bad, bad special effects to sh to show like Karl Marx uh, and Stalin on uh, Mount Rushmore. Right. So we've taken the time to demolish Mount Rushmore right. and then rebuild it. Rebuild Carve new faces onto it, and Times Square still exists. It's just all like a hammer and sickle and shit, and like communist propaganda. And Dinesh D'Souza is walking down the street with the Statue of Liberty was replaced too. I can't remember by what, but it was replaced by something. And Dinesh D'Souza is walking through seemingly going about his normal day. It doesn't look like, like this. with a disapproving look on his yeah, face. Yeah. Like mm. he's, he's Dennis Leary in amazing Spider-Man two, <laughs> where he just like, is disapproving. Like, <laughs> mm. But he, but he, but you know, he's still in his overcoat and tie and still seems well off. So I guess this, this switch from capitalism to socialism, is, he, he seems to be going yeah, about, right, right. about life. Is, about it, life didn't is exactly, it, did, uh, it didn't exactly, it didn't exactly, uh, 
uh, ruin his ruin his life, even though he spent the uh, next ninety minutes telling you why it would. <laughs> <laughs> but it did, dude. It really bummed him, bummed him out. Like he's he's not having a good day. Uh, he's having to pop a couple of Xanax, maybe having a strong scotch. I, do we have he, any Xanax and scotch? Because I could uh, really use one right now. <laughs> he misses the Coca Cola sign at Times Square. Now it's just all this Russian stuff. <laughs> It's not even white cola from the 50s, the, the communist Coca-Cola. It, do, it doesn't take long for all of the like tropes that you, you usually see in these movies, uh, of his movies, to pop up, like montages with uh, America the Beautiful playing, or something that happens like in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Mm -hmm. Or going back to how Dinesh D'Souza is a persecuted victim who was, who was thrown into prison for <laughs> political purposes where it reuses uh, where it reuses footage from uh, uh, Hillary's America mm -hmm. only this time there's <clears throat> so much of it is starting to come across more and more and more like self parody right. through each movie right. in this one it's got a reenactment of Dinesh D'Souza getting the phone call from Donald Trump about <laughs> getting pardoned because right. Trump ended up pardoning Dinesh which which let's talk about the impressionist that played Donald Trump <laughs> and the acting in general because Dinesh D'Souza with all of his movies finds a way for you to finds a way for you to say this movie has terrible acting and it's a documentary. <laughs> How are you saying that in a documentary? This documentary has really terrible acting in it. Oh, thank you, President Trump. He literally oh. does that. He gets a phone call. <laughs> you hear this the, uh, the Trump impersonator's voice on the other line. Like, Dinesh, I've looked over your files and you, this has been extremely unjust. Well, I can't do it. I can't do an impression that, any better than the well, guy doing it. Exactly. But that's just it. I mean, that right there is is um, is actually a pretty good impression of the of impression. That guy. Yeah. I've looked over your files. <laughs> like he's like Trump is Philip Marlowe. Like looking over <laughs> Dinesh. And, and he calls him. Dinesh D'Souza is at home. And Dinesh D'Souza goes, wow, thank you, Mr. President, as if he's a fifth grader right. who's gotten a birthday call right. from Bugs Bunny. Right. That's, that's, how he's, that's how he's acting in the scene. It's great. Again, I, I got the most... Oh I've really gotten the most laughs in in a movie. This, this, this movie has more laughs than comedies that I've recommended. I, you know... <laughs> Uh, I I probably if, if if I was in your position saw more of his movies yeah I'd probably be able to find more entertainment value out of it but being that this is my first time uh, seeing one of his movies and not realizing the amount of just absolute <laughs> fucking. <laughs> No, you made it through the movie. Well, the first uh, time I saw Hillary's America, I walked out of it, which I re I regret. That was that was kind of dumb. Dude. But but I did make it up, and I I, I watched the rest of it. Dude, and did, do, did do you realize how many times I uh, started looking at my phone just because I was this, like, this movie goes by slow. Uh, at one point, we had to pause it to grab a soda or something. We're like, oh my god, this has only been on a half hour. Right? It yeah. felt like it'd been on for yeah. an hour. But like it, all of the um. <clears throat> The scaremongering is all still still in there, too. Man, they did this kind of stuff way better in the 80s. You had awesome movies like The Day After. Yeah. That even to this day, will scare the crap out of yeah. you. Yeah. Like Special Bulletin and movies like that. <laughs> Not this shit. This movie... All right. This movie has uh, Dinesh going like, yes, let's talk about the Green New Deal. And then a mushroom cloud goes up. <laughs> and it's, it's like a bad, like, asylum special effect of a hollowed out city. Like a direct to video. And then, there is, like, and then there is, like, what looks like New York, but just in ruins and yeah. everything. And, uh, oh, and they have, like, uh, Chicago underwater yeah, at one point. Yeah, yeah. When, like, briefly they're talking about uh, uh, global oh, warming, I think, where God. they're like, huh, all these politicians, they believe in this global warming, then, uh, then how come they're living on the coast? It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's how that works. It's like, yeah. if you live in L.A., that means you don't believe in earthquakes. <laughs> like, like, okay. How could you, how could you uh, uh, believe in earthquakes but live right on the San Andreas? <laughs> it's like, it's like, hey, uh, do you believe in tornadoes? Yeah. Oh yeah. Then why are you living in Kansas? <laughs> <You> hypocrite. 
<laughs> Stupid. Go back and to Oz. The only person who can save us from all of this is is Trump as we see when Dinesh Holy is hell. when Dinesh is like reading the art of the de- a shot of Dinesh reading the art of the deal as if he's just discovered the Bible. The dude like he's like, mm, does so mm. much lip service to Donald Trump. Hey, Dinesh, if you're watching, Trump isn't yeah, that into you. Okay? <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Well, I mean, this is a giant campaign ad. That's oh, what it is at the exactly. end of the day. That, that's yeah. totally what it is. Like, and, and yeah, Dinesh D'Souza likes him. He in pardoned the, him. In the first 15 minutes, it's just, you know, him just like uh, showing like clips of Trump at Trump rallies and got this like upbeat guitar sound going like. Yeah, and, 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 and I'm like. And, 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 and I'll get more on this <laughs> in in a oh, second it, it's just the kind of because it's like yeah he likes him he, he pardoned him so but just the selective outrage that goes along with it in his case where i where he yeah this is a movie that that, that is certainly it's certainly it's a pro-trump film even though he stands for a lot of things that he was trashing about other people in the Hillary's America movie. Yeah. Like, Hillary's America had a scene where Dinesh is showing a re- reenactment of Hillary sl- walking through the hall slapping papers out of a random person's hand as if she's a high school mean girl. Flip it over to this movie, it's got a scene where Trump is stopping a mugging. Uh, right. which, yeah, yeah. Which, in fairness, I, I don't know if this really happened or if something Come like it on. happened. But well, I, I don't know. So it's like, but, but, but what I will say, I doubt it happened like this movie presents it. <laughs> like it's a scene from Death Wish and it's Trump in the Charles Bronson role. <laughs> I don't know if it necessarily happened like that. I <laughs> come on knowing what, uh, what, okay. Knowing what we know about Donald Trump. Okay. Even, even, okay. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give Donald Trump this much credit. Okay. Donald Trump is not the same as he was back in the nineties. No, you know, so I'll give, uh, I'll, we'll even, I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt. What we know about Donald Trump in the 90s, he wouldn't stop a mugging. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit. If, if I was to get, and I don't know, if I was to guess, I'd be like, you know, maybe they're riding around in their limo. Someone yeah. got beaten up and they stopped to help this person out. Sure. Like, it's it's not impossible that that, that, that would happen. And maybe it did. But the way that this movie is presenting it. Right. Like, <laughs> like he literally stopped the car. He's I, the lost <laughs> 80s action hero. Donald uh, Trump to the rescue. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> but it goes along with the kind of movie that this is, which is which is how the rest of his movies are, which is a lot of it's a lot of hearsay. It's a lot of like secondhand rumor. Propaganda. It's a lot of Yeah, it's it's that. But I mean you you go into this regardless of the quality of product it is. You go to a movie like this knowing it's going to be a propaganda movie. I mean... It's just whether or not it's good or well, bad. Um, yeah, it's a, a political documentary, certainly, or something that's got... I'll get more on that okay. here, here in a second. But it's taking a lot of things out of context, like using clips from politicians that are either exaggerating or speaking in hyperbole or being sarcastic or something, and Dinesh is taking... Totally literally, like as if this is a literal statement that this person just said. And it negates other points he's trying to make because later on in the movie, he's showing a scene from Sicko in which some things Michael Moore was taking out of context or playing out differently. Yeah. And yeah, sure, he's, he's, he's totally got a point there. But pot calling the kettle black, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. and and so and so that's kind of the thing is that like okay, these movies, you know, Hillary's America and and all this other stuff, you know, you could probably call them just as much propaganda as you pro as you could Michael Moore's movies. You know, Michael Moore's movies aren't exactly the most factual. Yeah. But, you know, they, they, they play to that demographic. Certainly. And, and kind of the same thing with, with this movie. Now, here's, here's the problem 
that I have with this movie, um, when, when, uh, and, and why I label it propaganda is because you take this and you compare it to something like no safe spaces. Yeah, I was going to bring that up later. Yeah. Oh, were you? Okay. Uh, if, uh, if you want, I could. No, no, stick but, a but, pin. but going with what you're saying with Michael Moore, it's just that, like, yeah, I, I understand someone whose politics are more right leaning isn't probably going to care that much for one of his movies. Sure. Just like someone on the left isn't going to care, care much for Dinesh D'Souza's. But if we're talking on just a. on presentation alone and editing. And uh, a, a, a narrative, or at least a flow that, go, that goes just, along just, with it. Well, beyond that, just like Michael Moore is a better filmmaker, yeah, than Dinesh D'Souza is. Okay, like he's better at doing that kind of movie. I'm not talking That's about fair. what's in them or the context or what's taken out of context or anything like that. I am simply talking as a filmmaker. Michael Moore's movies are radically better made. Than, than Dinesh D'Souza's That's movies. True. Dinesh D'Souza's movies have the quality of some bottom of the barrel bargain bin DVD that you'd find on the the bottom pile at Walmart that's been there for three years. Sure, sure. Uh, so with that, I'm like, you need you need to ask better of your audience, man, or, or think more highly of your audience, man, or just take some classes. I don't know because it's like because in the in a lot of these movies. Um, there's a percentage where you're like, all right, I see the kind of movie that he kind of wants to make here. Yeah. In the case of this, really not much of it has to do with Trump. And that's a common theme in a lot of his, like Death of a Nation also didn't, it said it was about, let's compare Lincoln to Trump. And that does happen in it, but not all that often. Trump's name is in the title here. You know, a majority of it's talking about other things. Yeah. Like they'll they'll have a whole side about like it's it's random. It's it's random sequences that could be put anywhere in any one of his right. movies. For instance, randomly it'll just be talking about the cake baker who got in trouble because they wouldn't make a cake for a gay wedding. In which this movie compares a gay wedding to a clan rally. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank God they're not using extremes. Uh, so. Like I said, it's, but what the crux of what this is trying to do, which is to talk a lot about being pro-capitalist, it's a pro-capitalist movie, so it's to talk about how much, how pro-capitalist it is, how much it loves capitalism and everything, mm -hmm. and how much it doesn't like socialism. Sure. So, yeah, there's a lot of bad things in the movie said about socialism, there's a lot of good things in the movie said about capitalism. Sure. And you could, and if that's what you want to do that's what you want to run with all right you know present your stuff out there maybe some of it i'll agree with maybe some of it i won't fine maybe yeah. i could get a good discussion you're, you're basically it, making a case for yeah. it and, and that's fine a small percentage of this movie does that right some of it does. exactly some of it does <laughs> and when you're almost giving it credit to be at least like regardless of how i feel about what's being said when you're almost wanting to give it a minuscule of credit yeah. to be like, all right, at least they're trying to have a conversation yeah, here yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It'll bring in like a former Islamic leader to to say like, I think radical Islam would support the Democrat because of because of how much the oh, Democrats man. like pride parades. I think Jesus. Uh, let, it, it, let's. Let, it's not so much we're criticizing Representative Omar. It's we're bringing someone on here to call her ISIS with lipstick. Right. Like literally the, a quote from this yeah, imam. Yeah. So uh, the guy's going like, "Oh, the uh, ISIS would love liberals because of their sexual promiscuity." <sighs> okay. First of all, random. Also, there, there's just it's just a sequence of different pieces put in here into the movie that could really be put anywhere and be put in any other movie, really. And, and first of all, that's not even accurate because uh, everyone knows that ISIS are I extreme conservatives. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think that conservatives are... I'm not going to compare conservatives to ISIS. Well, <laughs> it, it, conser well they're, so not, not like... Not like re not, okay, not American... Not the same as American conservatives. Uh -huh. But I mean, like, you know, they're, they are 
when when it comes to their to their oh, religion. So like, yeah, the terrorists wouldn't go to like a gay pride right. parade like this movie suggests. Right. The right. terrorists the terrorists would definitely vote for the Democrat because of their gay pride parade. Right. Right. Well, I, I guess they're getting more progressive. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like it's at one point he uh, he stops to interview uh, Isaiah Washington from yeah. Grey's Anatomy because I'm I'm supposed to feel bad for Isaiah Washington as he sits here doing this interview in his Hollywood mansion. Like, All right, <laughs> I feel bad for you. Uh, <laughs> and he's talking about everybody. The, uh, everybody in this movie that he interviews comes from a a, a, a place of privilege. Like uh -huh. like success and and uh, comes from a place of success and whatnot. Not once did they talk to like, you know, a John Everyman. You know what I mean? Uh huh. But what about the guy who smoked crack with Obama? <laughs> <laughs> he was probably a pick yourself up by your bootstraps guy. That happens in this movie. They interview they interview this guy. The guy was like, yeah, that. I s I smoked crack with Obama and I gave him a head in and Chicago. This was supposed to have happened in Chicago, by the way. And so like. <laughs> The crux of Dinesh's argument here is how oh, can we man. how can we had so much talk about Story da Stormy Daniels but not Larry the crackhead? <laughs> I'm like I am sure there's a reasoning behind this. If your argu if if your argument is like oh this got news coverage because one's a Republican, <laughs> this didn't because one's a liberal. Like oh yeah okay because Bill Clinton stuff never got coverage Dude. or Anthony Weiner or any of them. Like Dude. This guy, okay, and so so let's 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 talk about that for uh -huh. example for a little bit. Can can we go into detail or 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 do we have time? No, oh, dude, spoiler. Uh <laughs> you can't spoil it, man. <laughs> no, so here's this guy weaving this story about how he met then uh, Illinois of uh, Illinois Senator. Uh, Barack Obama, and one thing led to another, and he performed fellatio on with Barack crack. Obama. With crack, <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, I'm like, I know I was looking at that going like going what? like oh man I better not vote for Obama in the 2020 <laughs> election now. Like I care. Like fuck? again, it's it's like it's like when no, Isaiah man. when Isaiah Washington is bringing up like the amoralization of Hollywood. So like, all right, you're trashing Hollywood and celebrity and amoralization Dude. in a pro Trump okay. movie. Look at it this way. <laughs> Look at it this way. I know a guy with uh, schizophrenia. Yeah. Who you know when he's when he's unmedicated will actually say that he like fundraised for Barack Obama, blah, 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 all this mm. other stuff. This right here would have been if I was if if I was Dinesh and I met my friend, I'd be like, oh shit, man, I gotta put you in my movie. <laughs> Dinesh and Susan doesn't care. Like, like he, he, oh, he, shit, man. he doesn't. He, he's selective with his morality. He's selective with his outrage. Uh, it's just, he has absolutely no respect for his audience. Now, to go back to No Safe Spaces that you were talking about, okay. which is a conservative documentary that yep. you and I reviewed. Yep. And that movie, at least issues with that movie that I had, and I certainly did, there was stuff that looked like it was out of context mm -hmm. or uh, that I wasn't getting the full story about things, mm -hmm. but it was still a movie that was made to where it wanted you to have a conversation exactly. about about what it about its what its purpose was. Exactly. It, it you, wasn't it wasn't something that I completely hated. It wasn't no. something that I it wasn't something that I can look at and and call it propaganda because it wasn't. It was just it was just okay, this is this is my case for um how certain people will, you know, react to things that they don't agree with. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah, let's have a discussion about that because it's true. Some people out there need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that, and that was what, and that was what that movie did well because you could, you could leave it regardless if you like the movie or yeah. not, you could leave it legit having a discussion about its details and what mm -hmm. the movie was about and what the point of view of the movie was you could have it 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 could certainly inspire debate and discussion 
that's not what this movie God, is. God, no. Th this movie <laughs> is just, you don't like socialism, so you automatically will say that this movie is, is good. <sighs> this movie is, plenty of movies have an agenda, have a political agenda. Of course they do. I see them all the time. But you don't just stop at that. If you have respect for your audience, yeah. if you have respect for your audience's intelligence, you will at least want to make a good product out of yeah. it. Or at least something that, to where you can discuss its details and maybe have some kind of de debate and back and forth about yeah. it. You, uh, in, in terms of a movie like this, a documentary, either whether it's through uh, editing or entertainment value, or or direction or anything like or screen presence because you know he's in front of the camera a lot so you you at least want to make a good product by having really good examples of things like that or if you're telling like a, a narrative uh like a uh like an aaron sorkin movie or something like that it doesn't just stop at whatever its political belief is it will ha it does he puts very great details into dialogue, into direction, into character, into editing, storytelling, and all of that. He wants it to be a good movie. Yeah. This isn't that. No. This just stops at... This just stops at whatever its agenda is. Right. This is just simply made for the crowd that will like it only because... They agree with what's in the movie. Yeah, they, Only... they like they like come into it all uh, pr uh, with a pre uh, uh, predispositioned uh, opinion. Yeah, and, and and this director knows that he yeah. knows what that's what this crowd is. He knows that someone will go into this movie, they don't like socialism. They'll watch this and be like, "This movie doesn't like socialism so, either." So, that means this movie's good. Interesting. So you think just like Michael Moore, he's playing to his audience. Oh well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But Michael Moore, more so than, and I understand the criticisms towards Michael Moore. I, I, I do. I, I, um, but the, another difference between the two, outside of talent, <laughs> is also that Michael Moore will in his movies have on a lot of people that he doesn't agree with. He will have on a lot of people who maybe don't share the point of view of whatever the documentary is trying to say. By there the way, there I, will be mm. debates in his movies. Dinesh, that's not the case with him. It is just strictly... It is just strictly people saying whatever the movie's agenda is. And for a lot of people, it's hearsay. And the source is just, dude, trust me. <laughs> right, like, right, that, right. That, that, that's, <laughs> now, that, now uh, I, I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to just disclose, by the way, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't dislike um, uh, uh, Michael Moore. Mm -hmm. it, it's just that, it, it's just that, you know, Michael Moore is, is, uh, definitely an example of a uh, of a uh, um, a left leaning um, uh, documentary maker. Yeah, oh, of course he is. So, so we just kind of want to like give yeah, give and but, but a Michael Moore movie you could come out of more so having a debate about whether it's uh, socialized medicine like sicko, yeah. uh, gun control like Bowling for Columbine, right. or the Bush administration, or Iraq with Fahrenheit 9 11. You yeah. could come out of it having a debate with a lot of people about mm -hmm. it. Whereas uh, this just when it when this movie gets when Bowling for Columbine has has scenes of him going back and forth with other people, one being Charlton Heston. This movie, when it does get to the Second Amendment stuff, it is just talking to a parent who is very pro second amendment. Right, right. So it's again that like I said this is this is just for people to see and be like I agree with that. That means this movie's good. Yeah. You know, I I see it in the comments for the other movies where they go like I you know I think this movie's good because it's true the Democrats were the party of slavery in the 1800s, <laughs> which so it makes the movie good, I guess. Like, I, I don't know. Have standards. Like, it's, 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 that's, all, that's all I got to say. Like, I, like I, it, have more respect for your audience and have just a smidge of standards. That's really all I'm asking for. <laughs>
<laughs> so what uh, what letter grade would you oh, give this? Oh, F. <laughs> F. F. Fucking F. G. I'll give it a G. There you uh -huh. go. I, I would lowest grade I could uh, Z. I will give it fucking Z. <laughs> I will. I will just it, fucking put it in a fire. Just. The reason, My God. The reason why I don't like giving a movie like this an F is really? because, well, the reason why I don't like giving a movie like this an F is because that's exactly what he wants. He likes the fact that critics don't like his movies. Like, he likes... But, he, he, but hang on, but hang on. <laughs> uh, <I'm, laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring you back here. To, you'll see where I'm going here okay. in a second. Uh he 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 likes the that it gets that kind of reaction out of people. Like, is he really that much of a troll? Of course, this is a guy who did a movie where a hologram Klansman comes out of a screen and rides off on the White House lawn. That was in the movie you didn't see. That was his <laughs> best scene yet, by the way. Um, so there was so there was a small section in here where I'd be like, oh, maybe I'd give this a D minus where it's like if you're looking at this tiny little bit where it's um, here's what he likes about capitalism. Here's what he doesn't like about socialism. Like it's a little tiny bit where I'm like, OK, at least he's kind of trying to have a point of view right here. But then, you know, we get stuff coming in here about I, I'm going to compare this congresswoman to ISIS. Obama's smoking crack. Here is footage from our other movies. Here is uh, Isaiah Washington complaining about shit. Here's this terrible reenactments. Here's all this fear mongering with explosions and nuclear blasts. Yeah, this movie's an F. <laughs> of course it is. Of course okay, this movie yeah. is an F. Why do you do that to me? I know. Why do I scare you like that? <laughs> Not really scare me, but like, but like you lead me to believe that you're going to like yeah, it. Cause, cause yeah, yeah, I will give this movie an F because when he does the few little things on there where it's like there's almost a conversation here. When there's almost a conversation here. He, he goes back and, and, and doesn't and just does what a lot of his movies do, which is just trashy. Yeah. Which is just trashy, stone throwing <laughs> crap. Like that's oh, it, that, that's that's it, really. Now, granted, I'm glad I saw it because it's hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait for his next movie. Oh God! Oh, I can't wait. I who can't keeps wait. funding these movies? The guy who produced Schindler's List. I'm dead serious. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Uh, Bruce Schooley, I think is his name. Uh, uh, and and also D'Souza. He's a wealthy guy. He. Uh, he his his production company's named after him. So. I mean, I guess at 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 the end of the well, I I can't really criticize that. Would it criticize the uh, criticize the, what the, the end of the movie? No, the production the oh. production company's name. Oh, did, oh, because your production company, yeah. <laughs> I don't criticize the end of this movie where uh, ah. he. What is it? It ends with him going like a Lincoln fought to Lincoln fought to. End slavery. What are you, or Lincoln died to to end slavery. What are you gonna do to end the second form of slavery? Oh, Socialism. Crap. I gotta go see. I gotta go. Which, go I gotta okay. go. Biden. Biden's elected. Biden's elected president. That means slavery's coming back, and oh, I should oh, get man. to the theater. So I gotta take a bullet to the head so I can end the second coming okay. of slavery. It's like movie done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Roll wanna, credits. I want to shock people in the head. No, oh, no, this movie has five ends. Oh. Uh, all right, well, thanks you, uh, uh, thanks a bunch for watching, everyone. <laughs> As always, it's fun to talk about these. Uh, talk about these movies. Are you going to be here for the next one in a couple of years? He does movies every two years, so I'm sure he'll have one in 2022, <laughs> probably about the coronavirus. As long as Trump is involved, and I get a chance to do my Trump impression. I'm there. Of course he will be involved because he's going to reuse footage from this movie like he does in all of his movies. All right, let's recap this. Uh, relative agreement on, on most of these. Jiu-Jitsu, you gave a D. I gave a D plus. We both really enjoyed Fat Man. You gave it an A. I gave it an A minus. And then solid F for Trump card. Ooh, that is a real big F. That, is, that was... All right, thanks a bunch for watching, everyone. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and 
I, do, I usually say what's coming next week, but as I said last week, I don't know what's going to be coming next week. It'll, <laughs> it'll be a surprise to us. So, all right. Thanks. That was, that was fun. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh.